Um, hello and welcome to my talk. Uh, today I want to talk about the Debian games uh, and free software games on Debian and the status of games in Debian in general. Who am I? Uh, I'm a Debian developer from Germany and I've been using Debian since 2002. And 2012, I started to contribute to Debian, and one of my first packages was a game, of course. <laughs> um, at the same time, I also started a little project called uh, Linux USD, where you can play multiplayer online games uh, from the Debian repository, including games such as Open Arena or the Battle for the Resnaught, T Worlds and so on. Um, I contributed to, um, as, as I said, I started to contribute to Debian in 2012 and at the moment I maintain or contribute to around 500 packages, mostly games and Java packages, but also to the long-term support uh, section in Debian. So what can you expect from the next 45 minutes? First of all, I want to talk about the fundamental differences between commercial games and free software games. Because most people think that um, commercial games um, are the norm, which they are. And they don't know very much about free software games. So they ask, can I play game X on Linux? And 10 years ago I would have said, will be difficult. Nowadays, I tend to say rather yes. It is possible. It is definitely better than it was uh, 10 years ago. Um, I also want to talk about um, how you can find games in Debian. That's not as easy as it sounds. There are multiple tools available for you. And there's also a project called uh, Debian Games Blend. Uh, I want to explain why we put uh, some games in the main uh, repository in Debian, some in Contrib and some in non-free. Uh, what is the difference and why are they there? Why are there uh, games uh, which we cannot package at all? Uh, I will tell something about new games in Debian 10. And um, well, at the end, I also want to explore some new ideas, what we can do to improve uh, the status of Debian games. Um, if you look at the global game marketplace, you will see that um, they deal with thousands of um, games which are a million dollar business. Um, many of them attract millions of players around the world. They are big titles, blockbuster games, so-called AAA titles, um, which um, consist of, um, for example, Dota or Counter-Strike, um, SimCity, Call of Duty, Overwatch, and so on. And these games attract a lot of people and, um, well, they make a lot of money with it. Um, I've told this before, um, last year in Montreal there, is, there was a project, um, it was called the Next Generation Multiplayer Online Role Playing Game by Blizzard Entertainment, and, well, they decided after they uh, spent three years developing the game, uh, that it was not good enough. And before they make, made that decision, they um, employed about 100 developers and creators of artwork, um, software developers, who worked full-time on the project, and then made this decision, okay, it's not good enough. And they took the assets, um, all the images, sounds, and what they have done before, and made a new game, and that's called uh, Overwatch now, which is quite a popular game again. Uh, Blizzard Entertainment gets it mostly right all of the time. They have four or five uh, franchises, but they always attract millions of players and um, make a lot of money with it. So if you take a look at FOSS games, or free software games uh, instead, uh, you will see that the revenue of these games is close to zero. Most developers receive no money at all or, well, receive no donations 
And some of them, if they are lucky, they well can sell their game on Steam, or very, very, very few um, can attract enough people to support a crowdfunding campaign. campaign. For example, um, Zero AD uh, tried that and they could raise some money, but that's the exception and not the norm. Um, successful games attract thousands of players. For example, well, um, Mind Test is a very popular game nowadays. Um, it's a clone of Minecraft, but it has a very active community, and uh, it obviously is not as big as Minecraft, but it's still, compared to other games, a very active community. Um, you also have to say, okay, FOSS games are a niche. That's, that's a truth. Um, it's not, not as big as, as um, commercial games, of course, just because nobody funds those projects. These are hobbyists, um, developers who um, create a game in their free time, in their spare time, but um, yeah, they make no money with it. So you can't expect the same amount of quality that you see in commercial games. And when I talk to people um, who are only know uh, commercial games, they are a bit disappointed. But um, you have to see this uh, in perspective. Well, there are um, good arguments for um, free software games. And the most important one for me is that we have the source code and also, in most cases, uh, the right to modify um, the images, the sounds, all the assets. So that means even in 10 years time it is possible to, uh, w to um, develop a new game or to modify the game. Um, or as we, see, as we have seen in the past, it is possible that, um, uh, that, we, in, uh, that we can and maintain games for 20 years or longer. Um, for example, FreeSiv was developed in 1996, I guess. And still to this day, 20 years later, it is still developed and um, there's a vibrant community around it. And um, that wouldn't be possible if um, uh, sources were closed. It is also a great way to learn more about um, uh, developing in general. And um, it is not only meant for developers, but also people who are not into coding, but more into creating artwork, um, can share their work, and um, it is easily accessible for them, in my opinion. And this artwork is reusable for other projects, and that's also not possible with proprietary games, of course. So, um, if you uh, think about Think about it, there are game libraries which are not only used for games. Uh, they can be used for um, everything and especially uh, for projects which, um, like, like the Open Robotics project. Um, there is a story, I packaged once a free Orion and I needed bullets to complete the packaging. A bullet is a 3D multi-physics library where you, um, well, which, um, which um, makes it possible to simulate uh, deformances and uh, yeah, compute different objects who hit each other uh, in space. And uh, Open Robotics, someone from Open Robotics contacted me and said, hey, cool, you have packaged bullet, uh, and we use it for, for our robotics project. Uh, and you can see that not only uh, the libraries are meant for for games, but can also be used for different projects, and that's quite cool. So uh, we are not only packaging for a niche, but um, it can be reused. Yeah, the, another important aspect is that um, it is excellent integrated into Debian, which you not always have with um, commercial games. So we applied the same rules as with other programs, and um, for example, we, we are very, um, uh, we are very careful when it comes to licensing. We review not only the code, but also all the assets. And that is, that is um, 
uh, very time-consuming tasks, but it also is um, very important that we only have um, software and um, artwork that is free uh, available. Yeah, major games communities. Um, I mentioned before um, Mindtest and the Battle for Beastnode, but there's also Super Tax Card, um, Xonotic, and Zero AD, and FreeSiv. Uh, these are the biggest communities in the free software world at the moment, I think. And they are between 10 and 20 years old. Mindtest is a bit younger, it's only five or six years old. But they are very active and, yeah, they still produce a lot of new content these days. Mm. Um, I've counted 600 different games and emulators last time I checked. Uh, that's the number of games, free software games in Debian. And all software and artwork complies with the DFSG. Um, most games are written in C and C++. We also have some Perl games. Um, most important one is uh, Frozen Bubbles. Uh, one Haskell game is Raincat and a few Java games. We are very proud of that. We also have um, D games, which are quite rare. And uh, <laughs> the, the maintainer of uh, GCC suggested that we should port them to Java. <laughs> because he hates to support D, <laughs> but they are very great. Um, if you want to look at them, um, you can find them in the package games hyphen shoot them up. And, um, well, they are really fun, I think. Um, Popcorn reports more than 2,000 installations for popular games. Is this a good number? I think yes, because um, even more popular applications outside of the game universe um, can have much fewer installations. Mm, what I should mention too is that we are talking about PC games mostly because uh, web and HTML5 games are quite rare in Debian. As I know, there's only one game in the archive which could be possibly played uh, in a web browser, and that's Cave Express, but it's quite hard to um, um, sustain the tool chain. So um, you need to um, maintain a compiler that compiles the C++ code uh, into JavaScript. And um, this hasn't worked all the time. So yeah, if you're up to the task, please do it. Um, so one of the most difficult problems in Debian is how can you find games? I say this because 10 years ago I tried to get an overview of what games we have in Debian. And this was not very easy because most people suggested to use the terminal and to use tools like apt or aptitude to find them. And well, not all users are into this kind of stuff. They would prefer something more graphical. So nowadays I would suggest that they use um, tools like Synaptic, Gnome Software Center, or if you are into um, KDE, KDE user, you could also try Plasma Discover or Muon. Um, yeah, why do I say that? Um, it is, most people think um, that Users of games are also uh, hardcore Debian users. Uh, most people think Debian is about servers, or is about this desktop environment and this desktop environment. But people who want to play games are um, most often very casual users. So they don't want to spend much time to find games. They want just to uh, relax and uh, enjoy themselves. And yeah, we should make it definitely easy, uh, easier for them. There's another project which I mentioned before, it's called Debian Games Blend. And I come to that in a few minutes. So let's take a look at GNOME Software Center. Um, you can see a lot of symbols, you can see um, games, game names and games descriptions. What you can also see is that some of them are translated and some are not. So the language 
which you cannot understand, that's possibly Klingon. And uh, you can see that, uh, for example, um, the, uh, the, play, the game Killbots has a translated uh, text, and um, well, then there are others which are uh, in English. So this is a bit confusing. Why is that? Uh, why is it so? Um, those information are derived from so-called desktop files or AppStream data files. And most games do not ship such AppStream data files, and so we derive all the information from desktop files, but they are poorly translated. So most of them are only in English, and few of them uh, contain German comments or French comments or Spanish comments. But I know of very little games, for example, who are translated game descriptions which are translated in Chinese. So in an ideal world, you would see that all these um, icons and all these games would show uh, Chinese translation text, but we don't have that yet. So there's a lot of work to do in uh, the translation area, and at the moment we are not there. Um, what you can also see is the difference between the icons. Um, most of them look quite good, I think, crisp and clear, but take a look at Creptor or Lure of the Tempress, or for example, Magikor, the game on the left. Um, the resolution is very poor, or they are just screenshots. So um, they can be improved, uh, because people tend to play games, or are attracted to games with nice icons, so I, more eye candy is always good. But if you don't have a good icon, people will mostly think, hey, a bad icon means it's not a good game. So here we can improve too. Mm, the dating games blend. Uh, that's something I started in um, 2014, I guess. And that's just a collection of meta packages. So if you wonder, okay, you know the tools now, GNOME Software Center, Muon, and so on, and you can also use um, Aptitude. But then there's another alternative. You could install just a meta package. If you're into games chess or games cards, then you can just install the um, corresponding packages. Um, if you are more into Tetris games, you would install games hyphen Tetris. Or if you don't know what you really want to play, I suggest to install Games Finest, um, which contains more than 100 games. That's a lot, I know. But in my opinion, you cannot narrow it down to 10 games, which are good, because people tend to say, hmm, I like uh, strategy games, and the others say I like uh, role-playing games, and there are other ones who like first-person shooters. But those 100 games are of high quality, I believe, and um, some of them should be enjoyable for everyone. That's our blend homepage at the moment. Um, as you can see, it consists mainly of uh, the game description and two links to the packaging at tracker.debian.org. In my opinion, this site could also be improved, but as usual, um, we need more people who are, um, yeah, well, who want to invest time into it. Um, so we, we not only need um, people who would try packaging, but it would be nice if there were, were more people who would like to design a new page, for example. And I think if it is done well, um, you, you can definitely promote um, uh, FOSS games better. But in the meantime, I think it's a solid, okay thing, and um, it's informative, definitely. Yeah, well, um, since last year, a lot, has, a lot have happened. Um, we got some new games, and we, give, we had to remove some others. Uh, for example, G Tetrinet um, was removed, and a special game, which I liked a lot, um, OO Light. That's a clone of Elite. Uh, was also removed because the maintainer um, yeah, couldn't provide support for an embedded library which is called libmos.js. Um, there were security implications and upstream didn't want to remove the embedded library. 
So he decided, okay, I didn't want to do all the work, and uh, it's enough. And well, it was dropped. Then there are other games like the aforementioned Detail Internet, which depended on GNOME 2 libraries. Uh, in this case, so we cannot do very much because uh, nobody is interested in porting them to GNOME 3. Uh, well, it was. Um, we even got a response from one of the upstream developers who said, wow, it was cool that you uh, maintained my game uh, 15 years, uh, for 15 years, but nowadays, um, well, I probably should rewrite it and port it to another language or something like that. Uh, it's a shame, but that happens all the time and uh, it would be cool if we could improve on that, but, well, not enough people. And another game um, we had to remove from Debian that uh, was a sprite editor, the last game on the list, uh, and the author decided to uh, change the license to a non-free license, so there was not much uh, willingness from our side to maintain it anymore. On the other hand, we um, some other people packaged new games, including DDNet, which I have heard is a popular game in Taiwan. Uh, I believe uh, one Taiwanese uh, contributor even packaged it. Um, there are other games like Icebreaker, which were reintroduced. So this is a good example for um, for uh, not you shouldn't worry too much about if games get removed. You can always reintroduce them, and Icebreaker is such an uh, example. There's also Lugaru, which I can recommend. Uh, Lugaro was formerly known as Open Lugaro, but the name is a bit misleading because it wasn't open, the assets were still non free. But this changed uh, last year, and Wolffire Games decided to, to change the license, and so we could introduce, this, introduce it into um, Delia Main. Well, it's, now I have talked about Debian main all the time, but there are also games in Debian Contrib. So why do we uh, ship games in Debian Contrib? Most of these games are game engines, which are free software, but they don't have any free assets. So in order to ship them in Debian main, we had to um, either create new content or had to convince upstream to change the license. Nothing of that happened. Uh, Examples are L General, Cube 2, OpenMW, and GamRB. And for L General and Cube 2, I created a new data package. So those engines on those games could be moved to Debian main, but OpenMW and GamRB are difficult because uh, they are commercial games. These commercial games are uh, consisted of, I guess, several gigabytes of data, and they were never made uh, free. So, uh, free. Uh, so, in order to play them, you have to, to download them somewhere. Um, well, why are we so picky about um, that all game content must be free? Uh, there's actually a debate, popular, Man, Richard Solomon said, since the art in the game is not software, it is not ethically imperative to make the art free, though free art is an additional contribution. Some in our team um, disagreed with this um, view and said that it is uh, imperative that for a game to function, it also has to, it requires uh, data, uh, or software images, uh, and they must be free. So without those assets, the game wouldn't function. And that's why we decided to put them in Debian Contrib. The engines are free, you can study the code, but, well, the assets are non-free. In my opinion, we should use uh, Debian Contrib as a staging area and work on it to, well, either produce free content or um, take free content from, from other sources and uh, rearrange it and yeah, create, create our new, um, new packages. Sometimes a, a demo version would be enough. It doesn't have to be always a, a complete game. Um, 
Yeah. Um, then we came up with another solution, better Simon and Alexandra. Uh, Simon developed a tool which is called Game Data Packager, and it is written in Python 3, which is able to download content from uh, different sources, mostly uh, good old games, GOG.com, um, or you can also use um, images from certain CDs or DVDs. And the tool just checks, verifies, is the data valid? And um, it creates hash sums of uh, files. And they are stored in uh, YAML files. And we have currently um, 215 supported games. And you can just easily use um, a command line tool. And yeah, if, you possess, if you own the uh, original content, then it will create a dev package for you. Uh, why is this useful? Uh, most people uh, want to have a clean uh, and tidy uh, system, and if we can package it in a Debian package format, uh, that's definitely more favorable, favorable than um, yeah, just putting those files uh, in your home folder. So last but not least, non-free. Non-free is evil. Packages must be placed in non-free if they are not compliant with the DFSG or are encumbered by patents or other legal issues that make the distribution problematic. The minimum requirement is they should at least be distributable. Um, most non-free games are um, assets game data packages, but we also have um, or had some games like Zangband, or Zangband, I don't know how it is pronounced correctly, uh, that's a uh, fork of Angband, a very popular rock game. Um, the only difference between Angband and Sangband is, beside the rules and there are more characters and more possibilities um, to play the game, is that they kept the original license which forbids to make money with the game. That means it is not free. So if the author of Sangband tried to convince the original author um, of the code to relicense it like the Engband folks, Engband folks did, then it would be probably in main nowadays. But it didn't. Um, and um, then we also have Steam. Yes, I should mention Steam, of course. This is the most popular non free game package in Debian with more than 5,000 installations. Uh, Steam was definitely the game changer for Linux. Um, I guess it was released 2012, uh, Steam for Linux. And as of today, according to SteamDB info, more than 3,208 commercial games are supported on Linux. So they work natively. Uh, should we care? I definitely think so, because Steam is not only the largest digital distribution platform for PC games, but it also attracts new developers who want to create new con content that works on Linux, or they want to make their existing games available on Linux, simply because there's a market. And as, um, I don't know if you know the Humble Bundle uh, project, um, they sell bundles of computer games and they make it mandatory that they should also run on Linux. And compared to macOS users, Linux users are, they are less Linux users, but they spend more money on those games than uh, macOS users do. Uh, and that was a very important finding a few years ago. And well, people thought, oh, if I port my game to Linux, I can make money. That's obviously a good thing, and more people uh, joined, joined the train, and um, well, it goes, it goes forward. Uh, well, Steam is not the only um, digital platform, but it is definitely the most important one. <coughs> um, there are other gaming platforms, for example, Lutris, and um, which is not in Debian, but it's free software. And the goal of Lutus is that you uh, have a unified interface where you can just click on a game 
and then it is installed with all necessary tools like emulators or, or content, and it just works. Or if it is a Windows game, it would install Wine, configure the game, and you're good to go. Um, as I said, it is not in Debian yet, but it looks promising to me. But we also have um, another package which is called RetroArc. It's quite similar. It is, it is also a unified interface and it focuses on emulators and um, other media players. It's, it's very similar, but it's already in Debian, so you should definitely check it out. Um, I've sponsored PlayIT a few months ago, or two months ago. Um, that's another project which tries to uh, simplify packaging non-free games, which are either DRM-free or not DRM-free. Um, most of these games are from Good Old Games, or Humble Bundle. And the only thing you have to do is install the package, run PlayIT, name of the game, and then it will... Mm, oh no, it, I, I'm not sure if it, it will download um, the package automatically. But if you have um, the exe file or uh, the executable file, you can just type play IT, name of the program, name of the game, and it will create a Debian package for you, which is then globally installed on the system and you can play the game, which makes it very easy for even for casual users to, uh, to keep this system tidy. Uh, then I should also mention Wine. And Wine is not an emulator, that's the acronym. And, um, Wine made it possible for me in 2008 that I could play World of Warcraft on a Linux machine, which was, well, I was the only one in my uh, online clan who played on Linux uh, in those times, in those days. Um, nowadays, it is much more common. There's also um, a company which, which is called Crossover um, that provides commercial support for Wine games. So you have your Windows game, and you can just install it on your, um, on your n normal Linux uh, system, and it will run most of the times. Uh, um, for example, the, um, if the game is supported on Mac OS, like uh, World of Warcraft was, it is more likely that it will also run on, uh, on Linux. Uh, that's the experience I have made. Another good um, way to, to play Windows games on Linux is to use Play on Linux, which is also a front end for Wine, and um, it is free software, but also in Contrib, because it downloads non-free assets and non-free stuff, so we had to put it there. But it's a very good front end, which makes it also very easy to install Windows games on Linux. Who are we? <laughs> yeah, the Debian Games team is mostly responsible for um, well, it's responsible for most of the games in Debian, about 400. And we are a bunch of guys who try to maintain the older games and try to package new ones. But we are short on manpower, women power these days, so we can always um, we would always welcome new members. Uh, I myself uh, joined the team in 2012 and um, yeah, it was quite difficult in these days because uh, I couldn't find any sponsors. Nowadays it's, it's a bit easier because you can uh, just go to mentors.debian.net uh, and if you're lucky you will find someone who can sponsor your packages. But in those days it was harder, definitely harder. We are, yeah, how shall I put it? Um, we try to um, integrate games and it, uh, yeah, try to make it better, but it's very simple. So if you don't know, if you want to contribute something, um, don't think about how or what should I do. You should have a clear motivation. So it's not enough to just say, okay, I'm here and I want to, to do something, that's a recipe for failure in my opinion. You should have a clear opinion of what you want to do. You don't have to be a coder. You don't have to be someone 
who uh, writes uh, a lot of code. You don't need to be a programmer. We also need people who create icons, as I said before, because they improve the visibility of games. Or We need people who write documentation. We need people who translate descriptions. Like I said, if, you, if your uh, users can't read the descriptions, that's already a poor experience. So we should try to translate more game descriptions, and um, that would be nice. So you don't need to be a, a programmer. Um, don't be afraid to do the seemingly lesser work in Debian. It's important, very important, in my opinion, to, to, make, it, uh, to, to make games look good. Oh, uh, yeah. What else can we do? First of all, um, if you don't want to contribute on a regular basis, or if, you, if you're afraid to do it, um, just blog about your gaming experiences. Just play the game and tell people um, about it. Um, you can also package new FOSS games, but you can but we also appreciate if you uh, fix uh, bugs, um, currently um, the bugs in our packages. And, um, well, there, there are a lot of them. And even more importantly, important is report bugs. Uh, what, what I see, what I often see is that uh, we release a game and then a few months after um, Debian was released, some people report uh, bugs which we couldn't, uh, we couldn't detect before because those are runtime bugs. Uh, it is very hard to find them and um, yeah, we, we need more people who just uh, install a game, try it out and, and tell us um, if, it is worked, if it works for them. I've also thought about uh, four new projects. Um, one of these projects is improving our, our homepage, the Blends homepage, but also we could also create a completely new page, uh, homepage at games.org, for example, which would um, make it more obvious that we, uh, that we have a game section on Debian. So at the moment it is quite hidden uh, under the Blends framework. Perhaps we could move it to a more prominent place. Uh, I also thought about, thought about um, the game contents database, which would be similar to codesearch.net. That is a Debian project for obviously for searching code, but you could also create a database for image files or sound files and list them all in these, in these databases and with their license and a pre preview of the image so that people could find new images which they then could reuse for other projects. Uh, last but not least, a live, uh, live image about living games would also be nice. Uh, people tell me we don't need it, but I think it would improve the visibility of our games so if you could just hand out some image and say, hey, here are 100 games uh, which we support already in Debian, uh, let's try it. Let's try them. Oh, so far, so good. I rushed to all my slides, and I'm out of slides. Do you have any questions? Hi, my name is Andreas Tiller. I uh, want to uh, agree with you that uh, Blends pages not are not very modern anymore. And I would love if somebody would uh, do some better design. This is all templated. You can start today and find better de templates. We are using it for all Blends, so this is... Exactly, yeah. Uh, others would be profited as well. I, I, um, you might know that um, Ole Streicher has for Debian Astronomy some different design, but for me it's too less information. But you, you need to, uh, to decide. Um, another hint is because you said um, you had trouble to find uh, a sponsor in 2012. I yeah. started in 2013 the um, effort sponsoring of plans. It's just uh, in, in the wiki a page where you can proof that you have understand the Blends concept, and if you have Blends uh, uh, package, I try hard to sponsor your package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, 
that's a well-known project, and um, I knew about it back in 2012. Um, but I tried directly to um, to convince the team members in Blaming Games to to sponsor my packages, and I was a bit disappointed. Well, we have a games team, and nobody of the games team sponsored my packages, so I had to rely on uh, Debian developers from outside the team to sponsor my packages. And when um, Vincent Cheng became Debian developer, he was merely the only one who sponsored my packages then. Uh, so I had to rely on two people, and it was a bit disappointing, so I just remember it. Nowadays it is definitely better, um, but I fear not everyone knows that we have a mailing list, that, or that you can reach us on IRC. So if people want to contribute, uh, they often find it difficult to find uh, the, the person uh, who they should talk to. And I think we, we could improve that, uh, but I don't know how at the moment. But that it's definitely some, something we could do better. Other question? Yeah. Uh, do you have ever encountered some kind of legal issues? Because just like you mentioned, there are many game engines on on the Debian package list, but most of them are maybe reverse engineered or re-implemented from, from, from prior, prior works. So is there any kind of legal issues that they would try to sue the, the distributor because you distribute some kind of, um, some kind of pirated source code? <laughs> yeah, I assume these are all clean room <laughs> developers, uh, developments. Um, I'm not aware of any game engine that is a complete rip off, aka remake of an older game. So they try to create something uh, new, something which is similar to the old game, but also new. There's nothing that is exactly like the old engine. So for example, take El General. That's a clone of Panzer General, which is what was a game from the 90s, developed by an American studio. And um, I'm aware that a Russian developer, well, he, he almost created a clone of the original engine. But he was able to, to sell the new game, and still to this day, uh, he, he can sell this game, and it looks absolutely similar to the original game. But we don't have this problem, in general is very different, and. Um, our source code is, is visible to all. So um, as long as this is the case, and we know um, the author uh, has created it and licensed it on a free license, I don't see a problem for Debian. But if we are aware of uh, abuse or um, yeah, wrongdoings, we should remove it, yes. How about uh, emulators? Because uh, there are PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 emulators. And some legal issues was, uh, some, some, some lawsuit was filed in the United States, and if I remember correctly, the, the EPSX, I, I believe that the PlayStation 1 emulator was once taken down from several, several sites because the lawsuit back then was settled out and it was illegal to distribute those kind of source code. Uh, I don't know, I, I can't say much about that at the moment. Um, so, I can only um, reiterate, if we are aware of uh, wrongdoings, we will remove it. But at the moment, I'm not aware of any game engine that is uh, a problem for us. Thank you very much. I was told I can only answer one question, uh, but we can, we can talk about, about anything later. You can go ahead, please. <laughs> uh, so back in uh, 2012, 13, Work with Creative Commons and Mozilla and Can you put the microphone close to your mouth, please? Yeah. It's almost there, Mike. Yeah, I think it's 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 How's that? Yeah. Better. Okay. So in 2012 and 13, the UpStuff worked with Creative Commons and Mozilla and uh, Open Game Art to run a contest called Liberated Pixel Cup. And we raised, I think uh, it was just about $13,000 that uh, was put up for people to make free game art and free games to go with them as a contest. And uh, I, I thought it was a really successful project. We'd love to do it again, but um, we need kind of more partners to work with to, to do it. I wonder if you think people would be interested in um, pursuing something like that. 
we could announce um, such contests on um, our different media channels. We have uh, we are uh, we we have a news news side, or we could announce it. Um, we should have, we should talk with our publicity team about that. Uh, that's the way forward, I think. Um, you you need to communicate it to the community, or you should post it to Planet Debian, uh, perhaps. Um, if you post it on a mailing list, it's probably it probably gets lost. Uh, so I think there would be interest in such contests, um, but we must ensure that it is, uh, you know, well that that people uh, get to get to know it or are informed correctly. Uh, if you if you just release some information. Um, Probably they never knew that there was a contest, and well, are quite disappointed because they wanted to contribute something, but well, they didn't know it. I, I don't know. Also, at the moment, it would be difficult to think. But the publicity team in Debian is the right place uh, to to force that. Okay. Well, we we are running out of time. Um, I gladly answer all the questions um, afterwards. I would like to thank you for listening and for coming here. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs> One thing. Uh, Keith Packard, Packard is uh, sitting next to me. There's another talk about games and Steam. And I can highly recommend it to everyone who wants to, uh, wants to know more about Steam and uh, the development there. Yeah, go to it.